Brahma said, O most excellent sage, we were eager to have a vision of the Lord. Our haughtiness had been curbed. O sage, we waited there patiently. Shiva, the protector of the distressed, remover of the haughtiness of the haughty, and the undecaying lord of everything, took mercy on us. There arose the sound Aung in the prolated accent. The prolated vowel contains three matras or syllabic instants in pronouncing it. It was very clear. The divine sound in the form of a word came out from the most excellent of gods. What is this great sound? Thinking like this, I stood perplexed. Vishnu, who is worthy of respect from all the gods, who is free from all inimical thoughts, saw with a delightful heart the eternal being's manifestation on the right side of the linga. First he saw the syllable ah, and thereafter the syllable oo. He saw the syllable m mm in the middle and nada, the mystical sound, in the form aum, in the end. He saw the first syllable on the right, like the blazing sphere of the sun. O foremost of sages, thereafter he saw the syllable u, dazzling like fire. In the middle he saw the syllable m, mm, glittering like the lunar sphere. Above that he saw the supreme Brahman, the greatest refuge. It had the luster of pure crystal. It was the pure being beyond the fourth, Turiya, unsullied and free from extraneous harassment. It was free from mutually clashing opposites. It was single, isolated, void, free from exterior and interior, though stationed in the exterior and the interior, devoid of beginning, middle, and end the primordial cause of bliss, the truth, the bliss, and the nectar. Vishnu thus meditated on the universal soul enveloped by the two Vedic sounds and wished to examine the source whence the fire column arose and to go deep down the unequaled fiery column. Then there came a sage who told him the essence of the truth. Vishnu realized that the sage himself was the great lord and supreme Brahman, embodied in the Shabda Brahman, the mystic syllable Aum. Brahman is Rudra, free from worries. The words and the mind are incapable of comprehending it. Without reaching it, they return. It can be expressed by the single-syllabled mantra Aum. The supreme Brahman, the truth, the bliss, the amrita, the greatest of the great and the ultimate cause, is expressed by the single-syllabled mantra. The single letter A is the source of Lord Brahma. The single letter U is the source of Vishnu, the ultimate cause. The single syllable M mm is the source of Rudra. The creator is expressed by the letter A. The enchanter is expressed by the letter U. The being expressed by the letter M blesses always. It is all pervasive and the progenitor. The letter A is the seed. The being expressed by the letter U is Vishnu. Aung is the source, the receptacle, the lord of primordial nature and primordial being, the progenitor, the seed, source, and sound. All these constitute Lord Shiva. The progenitor is stationed after dividing itself. From the linga of the progenitor, the Lord, arose the seed, the syllable ah. The bija being deposited in the yoni, the letter u began to increase all round. It became a golden egg. It was something known which could not be delineated. The divine egg floated in the waters for many years. Then, at the end of a thousand years, on being hit by Ishwara, the egg floating in the waters split into two, 
giving birth to Brahma. The auspicious golden upper lid became the upper region, and the lower one became the earth of five characteristics. From the inner part of the egg was born the four-faced Lord Brahma, expressed by the letter Ka. He is the creator of all the worlds. He alone is the Lord manifesting in three forms. Persons well versed in the Yajurveda call it Aum, Aum. On hearing the words of the Yajurveda, both the Rig Veda and the Sama Veda respectfully called us then Vishnu and Brahma. Then, realizing the Lord of the Gods, we eulogized as far as we could Lord Shiva, the cause of great achievement. In the meantime, Vishnu, the protector of the universe, saw another wonderfully beautiful form along with me. On seeing that wonderful form, Vishnu and I became satisfied. The form had five faces, ten arms, and a complexion white as camphor, O sage. It had diverse brilliant features. It was decorated in different ornaments. It was highly liberal and endowed with great prowess. It had all the characteristics of a great man. Thereafter, the Lord Shiva was pleased. Revealing his form embedded in letters, he laughingly stood before us. The short letter A ah is his head. The long letter A ah is his forehead. The letter E is his right eye, and the letter E his left eye. The letter U is his right ear, and the letter U his left ear. The letter Ri is the right cheek of that great Lord. Ri is his left cheek. The two letters L and Ri are his nostrils. The letter A is his upper lip, and the letter I is his lower lip. The letter O and the letter Ao are respectively the two rows of his teeth. The letters M and Aha, Anuswara and Visarga, are his palates. The five letters Ka, Kha, Ga, Gha, and Na are his five hands on the right side. The five letters Cha, Cha, Ja, Jha, and Nya are his hands on the left side. Similarly, the five letters ta, ta, da, da, na, and the five letters ta, ta, da, da, na, constitute his legs. The letter pa is his belly, and the letter pa is his right side. The letter ba is his left side. The letter Bha is his shoulder. The letter Ma is the heart of the great yogin Mahadev. The letters Ya, Ra, La, Va, Sha, Sha, and Sa are the seven dhatus, vital secretions of the Lord. The letter Ha is his navel, and the letter Ksha is his nose. Vishnu and I became contented on seeing this letter-embedded form of the Saguna manifestation of the Nirguna Lord in the company of Uma. On seeing Lord Shiva in the form of the letter-embedded Brahman, Vishnu bowed down along with me and looked up again. The mantra beginning with Aumkar, with its kalas five in number, consisting of the auspicious thirty-eight syllables, being pure as crystal, increases intelligence and is an effective medium of accomplishing sacred rites. The mantras in the Gaya tree meter of 24 syllables and having four kalas are conducive to enjoyment. The five-syllabled mantra of eight kalas, consisting of 30 syllables, is employed for black magic. Mantras of the Yajurveda, consisting of 25 syllables and 8 kalas, are used for conciliatory purposes. The mantra of 13 kalas, consisting of 61 syllables, is conducive to outcome, increase, and destruction. 
The Lord Vishnu secured these five mantras, Mrityunjaya Mantra, Five-Syllabled Mantra, Chintamani Mantra, Dakshina Murti Mantra, and the Tattvam Asi Mantra, which is Hara's Mahavakya. Lord Vishnu performed japa of these mantras. The Lord Vishnu and I, being glad at heart, eulogized the boon bestowing Lord Shiva with appropriate words. Shiva, who is seen in the form of Kalas, Varnas, syllables, Rik, Yajus, Saman, Ishana, Isha, Puratana Purusha, the ancient being, the merciful, pleasing to the heart, hidden from all, ever auspicious, a great deity of beautiful feet, bedecked with huge serpents, with legs, eyes, and hands extending on all sides, the Lord of Brahma, and the cause of creation, sustenance, and destruction of the world.